Hello, I'm Rick from Supai, and on today's tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is how to make an iridescent or holographic Instagram filter that looks like this that I've got on the screen. So how do we go about making something when I move my face? Has this kind of reflective effect of a rainbow? Now, what we're going to be talking about on this is a tiny, 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 tiny bit of math. Nothing too complex. We'll talk about it along the way. So on today's tutorial, we'll talk about how to make this Instagram filter from scratch. <music> So the first thing that I've done is I've made a quick gradient in Figma. Now Figma is a design tool. You can use any image making tool that you like. Here, what I've done is I've made a rectangle with a fill, a linear fill. We can actually change it up here. And what I've done is that the edges kind of fade this out of those different colors. So this black background that we have right now won't actually exist. I can actually just change on the whole of this frame different color to whatever I want. You can see the ends change in there. Now what I've done is I've exported this frame, no fill on the background, just so the edges are see-through and I've exported it to my desktop. So if I hide this right now, I've got my rainbow.png here and I'm gonna make a brand new project from scratch. So again, a blank project we're gonna make and let's just open this up. So here we go, we're gonna start with a blank project and I'm just gonna make this bigger. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my rainbow.png, which has these faded edges to my project. So we're gonna drag that in. Now the first thing I wanna do is actually see my face. Let's see that, I can go to my video icon, I can pick the camera, and there I am. Hello everyone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a face tracker, first of all. So I'm gonna right click on the sidebar and add a face tracker. So this just tracks my face in space. You can see these axes if I move my head around, uh, going in the X direction this way, the Y direction upwards, and then the Z direction towards you. Now on this, what I wanna do is add a face mask. So I'm gonna add a face mesh in here, and this is just gonna overlay my face. Now this is built into Spark AR. Basically, it gives me something to kind of go over my face that I can play around with. Now on this, by default, doesn't have a material, I'm gonna make a material. So on the sidebar here, materials, I'm gonna click add, and by default, it's gonna give me a shaded material that looks in white with some shadows. Now I wanna change this material and basically instead have this kind of rainbow effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this material, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna first of all change this to a flat material. So I've gone from this using the shadows to not, and the reason for that is I want it just to have this kind of rainbow effect on here. Now what I could do is just say, well, this texture is a rainbow. So I'm gonna go down here and click rainbow. And that could be it, but it's not what we want really, is it? So what we wanna do is basically pick portions of this texture dependent on the reflection. So imagine I'm throwing a ball at the camera right now. And what I wanna do is see where this reflects based on my face. So if it bounces back, there's not really gonna be any reflection. However, it's gonna bounce at different angles depending on which is kind of my little balls coming towards me are kind of bouncing off my face. So this is what we really want to think about when it comes to iridescence. Essentially what we're doing is saying we're getting different refractions of light happening. And these different refractions are gonna be different colors. So how do we go about doing this? Now, there is obviously a little bit of math involved in this, nothing too complex. What we'll do is we're gonna open up the patch editor to let us basically change how this looks dependent on the angle of my face at different points. So how do we go about doing this? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click this texture icon on here. We wanna basically send some extra info in here, some logic. So I've just opened this area up, gonna make this a little bit bigger and zoom in. Now essentially what I want to do is I wanna sample this rainbow and put it at different points on my face. So for now what we're gonna say is we're gonna right click and find the texture sampler. What texture do I want? Well, I want the rainbow. So let's drag the rainbow in. So I'm gonna say this rainbow is gonna connect up with this texture and this texture sampler is gonna connect up to this output. Now currently it disappears. Now the reason why it disappears is that this zero zero point on the image, this is see-through. However, if I move this point in the X direction across, so point one, so I've gone a little bit purple, point two, I've now gone blue, so I'm at this point up here, point three, it's gonna go all the way up to one. 
which is again this far end now of red, but again that's see-through. Now in the y direction it doesn't matter because of course the same color in the y direction at each point. So what we want to do is basically fill this number in for each exact point. So how to go about doing that? Now there's one thing that we can actually pick out in our patch editor, something called a normal. Now a normal is basically the direction of different points on the face. So for instance, if I'm on my nose and pointing at the camera right now, the normal is coming directly at you. However, on my cheeks, they're kind of going out to the side. So basically we have this three vector coordinates for different points, like which way is it coming at you in X, Y, and Z direction. So to get this out, what we can do is further over here, we can right click, and what we're gonna find is the vertex attribute. Now the vertex attribute is basically saying what is on the face mesh right now. Not the color of the face mesh, but actually the different points on the face mesh. So what I want to find is the local normal, basically the point on the face mesh to kind of point out. Now essentially what I want to do is throw a ball at the face mesh and see which way it bounces off. If it bounces off my nose and comes straight back, it's going to be a different color than if it bounces off my cheeks, which are going to be different colors too. So this is kind of what I want to do here. I basically want to throw different points at my face. So to do this, we're going to use a mathematical thing called a dot product. So I'm going to right click and find something called the dot product. Now here, what are we going to pass in is we're going to change this to a vector three. And the reason why we want to basically have which way that we throw in things, I'm throwing things directly at my face right now, versus the local normal. So I'm going to pass in the local normal first of all, which is three directions. Each point is bouncing off in three different ways. And I want to multiply this, or basically do a dot product, in which direction I'm talking about. Now I'm throwing things this way, and basically things are hitting my face. And we want to get out a number from that. So the way that I'm throwing right now, zero, no across, Y, no up and down, Z, I'm going to be straight at ya. So the last one is going to be one. Now what this outputs is a number, a number based on how strong this output is, how strong and what reflection is actually happening right now. And what we can use is we can pass this number in as this first point. Now we can't pass it in directly because this is just one number and we get something that looks like that, which kind of makes sense. But what we're going to do is instead we're going to right click and type in pack. And this we're going to pass in as a vector two, back to normal again. And this is going to pass in on the X direction. Now the X direction is because it's a cross in this way. And you might notice here that things that are kind of facing in the same direction are doing the same thing. So everything that's currently in red is kind of bouncing off my face at the same strength. So my nose, my kind of forehead are facing the screen. These outer points are going outwards, so they're different um, strengths. However, if I turn my head, it keeps things in the same way. Now, of course, what I want to do is still bounce it off going straight forwards. So this doesn't always make sense. However, what I can do is take this local normal and multiply it. I'm going to write multiply. I'm going to pass this in first of all. I'm going to take this and pass it in as this first one. So what we're going to do is multiply this by not the vertex attribute, it doesn't really matter about my face, but something based on the whole thing, the whole of the Instagram filter itself. And this one, we're going to find the vertex transform. We want to take all these normal points and transform them using the normal. So we're going to take the normal and multiply it by the general normal of this. So if I pass it in now, even if I turn my head, you might notice that still if I reflect things off my face, we're still getting things in the same way. However, all the colors are now dependent on the rotation of my head because we've multiplied this by the vertex transform. We've got all these points on my face with the local normal, the kind of direction things are pointing up. And then what we're doing is we're basing it on the whole of this instead. So we're turning my face around. Now what I can do is you might notice that the edges here, this kind of cuts off. I can actually take the rainbow texture and instead change some of these U and V. So for instance, I might want to say this repeats. If I turn my head far enough, it kind of runs out of room. If I click repeat, it kind of carries on. Now I could do this mirrored as well. So this kind of goes from red to blue, back to blue to red, or I could just repeat and say start at red. Now generally I'm going to use repeat because this is kind of how real life physics actually works. 
So what I've got here is some kind of iridescent effect. Now this kind of looks very extreme. However, what we could do is change how this material actually looks. So for instance, if I click on material now, what I can do is change this blend mode and say from alpha, it could go to something like add. And what I get is this kind of very bright effect. I might want to tone it down a little bit, but I have this kind of iridescent feature now, it kind of looks very um, millennial, I suppose. Um, but what we want to do is kind of cut off these edges. You might notice at the edges of my head kind of have this line. I want to get rid of that. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this texture sampler, which looks good, and essentially just say the middle bit is the thing that we want. So between this bit here, I'm going to move this bit over. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to use an FDF, SDF, assign distance field, circle. Now the circle, I want to go around my face, but I don't want it to cut off at the edge. The circle I'm going to pick is that with maybe 0.2 radius, it's not too big. And I want this to be smooth. So I'm going to be smooth step. I'm going to pass this in as the first one. I want it to go from zero to not one, but maybe 0.2. And then what I can do here is blend them in. So instead, I'm going to use a mix. I'm going to pass this step in as the last point. And I'm going to pass this texture sampler in as the first point. And if I pass this remaining thing in instead, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So now we don't have this line around the edge. Again, if I make this quite extreme, you'll see this is kind of fades out. This fade is 0.2, so 0.3 gets a little bit more of a fade. 0.5, you can see the edge again up here. So generally I'm picking something like 0.2, 0 0.3. And this depends on these numbers as well. So this is an extreme version, of course. I want to tone this down a little bit, maybe something like 40% looks good. Maybe something like screen as a render mode looks a little bit different. So it looks like that. Now, of course, what I can also do in here is this might feel a little bit too head on. I can actually play around with some of the numbers over here. So for instance, in the dot products, rather than coming straight on at my face, what I could do is put some numbers in here, such as maybe minus 0 0.2 in the X direction to shift it over. So it's kind of coming at an angle now. And in the Y direction, maybe something like 0.2 from the top. So there we go. So what we've done here very, very quickly using a little bit of math is added in this holographic effect that looks pretty good. And we've made something very, 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 very quickly.